You already know that managed environments give you unprecedented visibility and control across your organization. Oh, who was cooking fish in the microwave? At least where Power Platform is concerned. Phil! But managed environments does more than ever. We've really doubled the number of new features that we have in managed environments. See the new features and of course, what, what about licensing you guys? Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Toppers from the PowerCat team. And today we're here with Evan and Zohar to talk about managed environments. Hey, you guys. Hi there. Hey, Phil. So it's been a while since our last managed environments video, uh, but I hear all of my customers talking about them. So tell us what's been going on. We've really doubled the number of wow. new features that we have Great. in managed environments. So I'd love to talk about three in particular. Um, the first is uh, custom welcome experiences for makers. Um, so, you know, when the maker lands in the maker portal for the first time, they can see training links and security policies or anything really the admin wants to include. Um, and so the admin just goes to the settings, can include plain text or use standard markdown to show images or text styling, um, and they can tailor that per environment. Um, and so we think this is a great way for admins to educate and guide makers. Give me some more, Evan. What else you got? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the second one I wanted to mention is solution checker enforcement. Admins can require now that solution checkers always run uh, whenever a solution is imported to check for uh, security, performance, or reliability issues. Yeah. And so there are two modes. There's block mode. Um, so any solution that fails to checker rules will not be imported. And then there's warn mode. You'll basically get an email if the checker rules fail. And so in just the last few weeks, we've had hundreds of customers using this feature uh, to better control what gets de deployed. So the third one I want to highlight is pipelines. And we talked yeah. about this a little bit last time. I know you've talked to Kartik and Casey. Um, and pipelines is now generally available. And so these are our in-product ALM capabilities, and we've seen a tremendous uptake you know, over the last couple of weeks, in particular with over a thousand customers now using this to deploy their low-code assets from a dev to test a prod environment. Where we also announced some new capabilities that will be coming to pipelines, including scheduling your deployments, so you can do this off hours, uh, running delegated deployments using service principles, and extensibility, nice. so the ability to run custom logic before and after the deployment executes using uh, Cloudflare. That's awesome. That's really useful. And this is really just the start. Uh, you'll see over the next few months, we'll continue to add more value to managed environments. And then one of the things that was around, uh, and the well, last time we talked was sharing limits. Uh, how, how have sharing limits been used and what's happening there? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So uh, we have sharing limits for apps today. Uh, we are very close to releasing sharing limits for flows here. Nice. And we think that's going to be really valuable for our customers. Sharing limits is a great way to ignite the conversation and make sure that people are actually in a shared environment are doing all the right things based on what IT guidelines are in that uh, maker onboarding uh, welcome email or message. Now, I'm reminded of our next question here as I take a drink of coffee. Uh, what, <laughs> what about licensing, you guys? Uh, managed environments does require premium standalone licenses. Today, um, you have two types of apps and flows. You have standard apps and flows that use standard connectors like SharePoint that mm -hmm. require a user to simply have an office license. Um, then you have premium apps right. and flows that use our premium connectors like SQL and Dataverse. And these require a standalone license with premium use rights. Now, when you turn on managed environments and you run an app or a flow in that environment, you will need a standalone license with one of those uh, premium use rights. So. This includes standards, apps, and flows that use our standard connector. So of course, the question we all hear, I'm sure you've heard it far more times than I have, uh, why Why does this require everyone in the environment to have a premium license? We heard from customers that they wanted you know, more visibility, more control with less effort. And so we're offering a premium level of governance um, to provide these capabilities. And Microsoft incurs real costs with managed environments, with yeah. our analytics and storage services. But you know, more importantly, we feel like we're providing customers with real value. And IT governance is more critical than ever. Um, you know, we, we know from uh, IBM, for example, they've estimated the average cost of a data breach is over $4 million. Um, and so with managed environments, we're offering tools like solutions 
resolution checker and sharing limits so admins can apply those guardrails to reduce the risk of a data breach. Yeah, I think that's a good point, right? We often don't think about like that there is real cost and there are real servers behind the scenes running this, right? Because, you know, you go to the website and it's always up. Yep. Is there I would add to that, uh, yeah. Phil, that the, one of the nice things about managed environment is you could uh, actually grow with it. Uh, you could start with one environment and uh, assign it to the users in that environment, see if it's serving you well, and then you could grow to more environments all the way to all your environments, including the default environment. So let me ask you about that then. So if I'm an IT administrator watching this, right, this is a lot of new capability. Uh, you know, IT administrators are risk adverse. Is there a risk to flipping that switch and turning it on? So the relatively minimal risk from a change management perspective when you think about IT. You turn it on, and if you're not using any of the capabilities, then it's a no-op. And then mm -hmm. once you start turning on capabilities, one is it gives you just turning it on and selecting, give me more visibility. You get a lot more visibility to what's going on in that environment. And it's a passive uh, experience. There's no risk to the makers. Now, once you start enabling the different controls, for example, uh, sharing limits, then uh, you should think about the change management and the impact of now blocking any maker from sharing right. broadly. It doesn't retroactively block things that have been shared already, but it will prevent people from sharing oh, nice. okay. uh, beyond. And because all of this is turned on at an environment level, um, you don't have to turn it on for the whole tenant at, at first. You can choose the developer environment, try the capabilities out there, roll it out environment nice. by environment at a time. Yeah, that does make it feel a lot safer. And then I guess I should ask the other question, right? If I'm, I'm an IT administrator, can I turn it off? Yes, so you could just uh, run a PowerShell command that would actually uh, bring that environment back to a standard environment case. And, um, you know, you could get out of it. It's a two door decision on a, a, a one time and forget. <laughs> it's a two door. It's a sports car. It's a two door. <laughs> yeah, That's, it does sound pretty low risk, though, right? You could just switch it back off after evaluating yep. it. And you can evaluate it in the dev environment, like you said, really get, you know, no risk to cost either. Evan and Zohar, thanks for being here. There is so much happening in managed environments and more to come. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks for watching, everyone.